you, Michael. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, just go going back and recapping uh, last week's game here at Baylor. Uh, just again, once again, really proud of our players' uh, performance and execution on the field. I thought really all parts of the game were, were really uh, excellent and strong in, in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, to start with offensively, uh, just I, I thought our execution run and pass was really strong. Samaj P. Ryan again, uh, you know, just had a huge day and rushed the ball as a team for almost 250 yards was a big part of the game. And uh, Sterling Shepard again had a monster game with 14 catches, 177 yards, a couple of touchdowns, some really tough competitive catches, and a great effort to get one of the balls in, touchdowns in. Um, Baker Mayfield, again, sensational. Um, yeah, I believe he's the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week, maybe, but um, I thought I saw that. But um, again, Baker just exceptional in his decision making, uh, making plays, you know, running around, scrambling, making plays, just great throws, stood in there with one of the touchdown passes with the blitz hitting him right in the face and took it, delivered a great pass, um, really great. Uh, offensive line was exceptional again. Uh, so, really, really solid performance by all of them. Defensively, really the same thing. Uh, I think we had, we counted up eight possessions that were three and out or less. Uh, so I think there were five three and outs and three less than that with turnovers. Uh, one play and two plays, I believe, with uh, two, uh, two interceptions and a, and a fumble recovery. And, and you know, playing Baylor's, uh, you know, offense, that doesn't happen very often. So I thought, you know, our ability to really control the run game after the first quarter was a major part of winning the game. I, I, they had 83 yards in the first quarter rushing the ball, and they had 76 in the last three quarters of the game. And I thought that was a major part, uh, a big part of the game. Uh, I thought our coverage was exceptional uh, outside of a couple of plays. Uh, came up with some big uh, turnovers and uh, really, you know, again, thought played well. Uh, kicking game, again, really solid. Outside of the one, we had one kickoff return that got away from us. We didn't contain it, but Austin Seibert, the few punts we had, really hit it well. Uh, wet conditions, you know, were, I, I think, got got both uh, both teams on an extra point, but the rest of it was uh, really solid. So that leads us to TCU coming uh, here this week. Um, another uh, excellent football team, uh, you know, it's, uh, again, has played really well and uh, been a high-powered offense, you know, as we've gone through the year. Gary and his staff always do a great job and and uh, defensively, very disciplined, sound, good uh, defensive team as well uh, with only one loss. It's a, a team, again, that we know we've got to have a great week of practice, uh, keep improving uh, and give ourselves to, to give ourselves the best opportunity here to win uh, this week. Can this team be elite? Pardon me. Can your team be elite? Uh, we're, you know, we're working that way. I, I think we're, uh, you know, we we continue to to improve and just got to make progress here this week to play TCU. Well, talk about what happens. You know, your defensive line has has become so good. How much does that help you on the back end and pass coverage and things? And it all works you, together. Uh, the defensive line being disruptive, um, you know, always has a factor in in pass coverage and. Uh, I thought, but I thought too, you know, there were several times uh, the other day there at Baylor where the coverage made them pull it down and allowed the, 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 the front guys to get a sack uh, So and pressure. So it, they, it goes hand in hand. Well, could you envision Jordan having that much success against a guy like Corey Coleman? Um, it, you know, uh, it wasn't all one-on-one -on -one matchups, but, you know, to be fair to Corey Coleman, who I think is a sensational player, you know, but Jordan played well. He, he, he played uh, with great technique. Uh, Jordan's a guy that has size, uh, he's six foot or better, and, and he's got really excellent speed to go with it. So Jordan continues to come on and, and be, a, you know, a, an excellent cover guy and defender for us. And, uh, and, I, and I thought, you know, our coaches did an excellent job, Mike, and, Carry and all the defensive coaches of you know of changing up how we were covering him as well and, and finding ways to give some help on occasion not all the time but but when we could. I saw Zach walking around with a boot on Saturday after the game. How's he doing? Um, we'll see today when he gets uh, when he gets there. But he finished the game, so I'm 
I'm sure he'll, you know, I, I would envision today he'll require a little bit of rest, but uh, I believe, you know, he'll be he'll be as good or better than he showed up last week as we go through the week. Bob, have you, uh, have you heard from the Big 12 on Matt Diamond? Will he be available this weekend? Uh, he will be available. Um, you know, his penalty doesn't uh, require um, – it's different than, say, uh, a fighting penalty or something like that. So he is cleared to go uh, this uh, this week. Are you? Are you? Do you give any additional uh, discipline to him, or did he get? Um, I've time? just been made aware of that uh, yesterday, but no, um, other than other than some team discipline and uh, and some educational opportunities, and um, you know that'll that'll all happen. Were you more upset after you saw what he did? More upset with the kick or with the yelling at the fans? Uh, both. Both are, you know, completely unnecessary, and there's no place for that, you know, in, in, uh, in what we do and, and in college football. The hit on Mixon, was that not – that's not – I'll targeting. send it into the league whether that's targeting or not and uh, see what they say, you know. Seems, seems like it was and seemed obvious, but since they didn't throw it, maybe it's not. What does uh, the, the unknown status of Boykin uh, do to you in terms of preparation? Uh, yeah, uh, Trayvon Boykin, again, another exceptional player. Um, we have such great respect for him. Uh, whether he's able to play or not, you know, we'll, we'll operate under the assumption that he will. Uh, with him, compared to the other guys, you get the obvious uh, more quarterback run game and ability of the quarterback to have designed runs, uh, which they're so uh, good at. Um, not that you, you can get some with the other guys as well, but you don't have a, you know, the threat of a guy that's actually could be a running back back there. I mean, he has that kind of skill running the ball to go with the great arm. So the rest of the offense, we don't feel is really any different. They're not going to change their offensive schemes uh, really outside of the, you know, some of the run games. So we'll proceed as though uh, he's going to be there. The last four weeks or so, Samaji's really kind of busted out. Not coincidentally, your offense is really kind of picking up too. I mean, I assume those two things are kind of related. No question. Uh, you know, Samaji's uh, had great success and continues to. He's, uh, you know, an, uh, such an exceptional runner. Uh, to go with the power, you have the speed and the, such great movement for a guy that big, you know, in the hole, as you see when you watch replays and you watch some of his runs. But, um, you know, the running success and his success really open up a lot of other options, you know, offensively. Um, he said after the game that he f has never felt better in high school or college than he feels right now physically. So the fact you've been able to alternate running backs and Joe in there and things has really helped him. I, I think definitely, you know, as you get here in the last couple, the last few weeks of the year, the fact that he hasn't had to carry the entire burden you know, makes them feel fresher and um, and allows for more success. I think too, uh, along with that, I think his um, his really discipline to train the way he has and and to lighten up a little bit and to gain power and gain speed to go with it uh, probably has some to do with it as well. But uh, the fact that you know you know that these guys have been able to Daniel Brooks, Joe Mixon, and on and on have been able to share some of the load. I think helps him. Did you scheme the defensive differently than you had the last couple of years against Baylor? Was it just the players played better? Well, in some parts, uh, some there was some carryover from a year ago, um, but there were a few a few wrinkles. Uh, overall, um, I, I thought the di uh, the biggest difference in the game was uh, our uh, secondary's ability to cover, and and uh, and I th I thought they uh, did an excellent job that way, be and and be you know a big part of it. Uh, uh, was that, uh, and and they, those guys really technique wise and, and challenged them and really played well. Sterling was saying that you know the biggest difference he sees in this team this year versus last year is how the guys attack practice just every day. I'm curious, is that something that's been a common trait of some of your better teams? Is that they love practicing, they attack it? Yeah, uh, probably for sure. Um, you know your preparation through the week and 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 making sure you're making improvement as you as you travel through the year. It's said a lot, and but and it's true. The the better teams really do, and um, and I feel like we have, and and because we've been healthy, we've been able to go and against each other a lot. Um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we have a lot of 
different team competitions, and and I think we've helped make each other better uh, from doing it. Is old Orlando Brown healthy? I saw him in a boot um, a few hours ago. Um, as far as I know, he is, but uh, I'll find out more here today. You know whether he can practice or not. A lot of times, our guys are protected in boots to until they get to practice and and or if it's going to be a daily, you know, from day to day. But uh, from what I understand, he'll be okay. He kind of took it to, to a good player. Oh, well, at times, uh, you know, Orlando had a really good day, you know, overall. But, um, you know, he's he's playing well for a redshirt freshman. He continues to really improve. You just talked about your, your corners covering very well. And I'm wondering if in the past, maybe not having as much confidence as you do now in them, that was causing you to do other things with the rest of your team because you were compensating perhaps. Is, and that happens once, uh, not once in a while. That, that happens with all defenses. You, you have to play to what your, what your players are able to do. Um, you know, so that's, that's a fair. And the way you're playing now is the way you draw it up if, you know, you're, you're good everywhere or confident. Fairly everywhere. fair to say, yes. And that's, that's helping. Mm-hmm. I should have said too. You could ask more uh, players of the game: uh, Shepard, P. Ryan, and uh, Mayfield, and then Tapper and Thomas and Jordan Evans on defense. Jordan Thomas on special teams, if anyone matters. Have you noticed the difference in the way Coach Riley is calling games, maybe in week nine or ten, than he was earlier in the year? That he's kind of gotten used to the Big Twelve. I don't know if it's used to the Big Twelve. It's probably more used to. Uh, our players and what what we feel we can do the best and confidence in what we're doing and how it's progressed you know as we've gone through the year Bobby as you look back now how much were those first three or four weeks of the season kind of feeling out for what you had off that well it's always that way uh, you know of of what your personnel can do the best and and what they're able to handle and <laughs> you know so I'm you know that and especially when you have some new coaches, there's 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 something to do to that. I don't know how to measure it, but it, it, it's always part of the, you know, that's always something that has to happen. You have to grow in it. Well, can you talk a little bit about the chemistry Baker and Sterling have developed this year, and especially how Sterling's really developed with a lot of different quarterbacks during his time? <laughs> yeah, Sterling's developed a good relationship with about any quarterback, you know, so that's that's the bottom line. He's a, you know, really dynamic playmaker, and, um, and so competitive and can make such tough plays and Baker knows that, you know, so in a pinch you wanna you wanna you got a tough situation, he's a good one to go to first. If when when it when the when it works that way, you know, through his read progressions. Does anything Baker do, does now, did anything surprise you? <clears throat> mm -mm. Not really. You always have a chance in the play, you know, and and uh he can make something, you know, he can create something uh you know, most of the time and and that's again, once in a while he gets he gets trapped and, and may take a sack, but you have to live with that because of the other he makes more plays doing that than he doesn't, you know. About taking hits because he seems to never want to slide. He'd rather run out of bounds if he can do that, but he'll take the hit if he can avoid, you know. Yeah, you'd like him to, to avoid some of them for sure. Um, you know, trying to talk him into that isn't the easiest thing to do, but you know, I'm sure he and Coach Riley have had some conversations about it and and uh, but you know he, he you'd, you'd like to see him avoid some of them. Is throwing it away a similar challenge for him? Yeah, and 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 understandably so because what he's been able to create when he hasn't thrown it away and given up on the play. So um, you know that, and it's it's easy for us to sit there, all of us who aren't quarterbacks. Oh, just you know he's in the heat of the moment, trying to create something. Giving up on a play is not in his nature. And so it's not the easiest thing to do sometimes. Would it be accurate to say for him to be who he is, you got to let him be on that high wire? Exactly. Talk, exactly. Talk about the good fortune. You've, you've done a good job with new coaches and other things that you've done, but you have a guy walk on the program that just basically walks up, introduces himself, and now he's a possible Heisman Trophy winner. Yeah, it's exceptional just his uh, confidence to, to, to have come here in the first place. And uh, that, that tells you all you need to know about his personality. And, and then uh, what he's, you know, the way he's been able to play and, and the players around him, it's, uh, it, it's really been exceptional. I keep saying it. I mean, just what he's done has been, been great. And uh, hopefully we could, you know, uh, capture it again this week you know, from you living week to week. What's it mean for your program to have him getting Heisman consideration right now?
Uh, I think it, it means a lot. It means we've been, you know, um, we've executed really well. We've been successful. Uh, you know, we're moving the football. And normally, you know, those guys, you're on winning teams, you know, so all of it together has been a positive. I think it's fair that he's in that talk with, with other great players around the country because he's earned it with, with, with numbers and success on the field. And, um, you know, and you compare his, his numbers with other past Heisman Trophy quarterbacks, he's right there. So we'll see, you know, he'll need to play well this week. We're all very aware of that, you know, to, to continue. You got a lot of the attention for the play he made to clinch the game in the fourth quarter, deservedly, but Flowers leaking out like he did was also. Fun. Yeah, that was a great heads up play by Dimitri, who continues to play really well, um, but for him to, to have been blocking, see that Baker's in trouble, and then to, to sneak out and, and find space, you know, find, give yourself an option to be thrown to, and he did, you know, and made a nice, tech, nice play. With Baker's ability to scramble, that maybe make the receivers a little bit more aggressive in trying to get open because they know he's kind of buying time back there, maybe more so. Yeah, it's fair to say that um, we, that, you know, the receivers know we've had success out of the pocket. Find your space, you know, hustle and, you know, keep, you know, keep playing hard to find something open. You practice the scramble. Baker said earlier that they kind of practice that, you know, in the scramble mode. Yeah, uh, Coach Riley and all those guys, offensive uh, uh, players, uh, they uh, we practice it quite often, actually, um, for a period of you know it doesn't go on long, but it, you know, for three four minutes they'll they'll get a good number of plays in off of scrambles. How bittersweet is senior day for you to see those guys play their final game out there? Um, you know, it's always tough for me. I, uh, you know, you become, you know, so attached to all your players and uh, then to know they're going to be on their way out is, you know, it's, it's always a little bit emotional and, and uh, you know, but, but it's also time, you know, you realize, hey, this has been a period of time for them that's been, been good and it's time for them to, you know, to move on to, you know, to other bigger and better things and move on with their life. So that part of it you feel good about too, you know, that uh, they've had a, a good run and now they're on to other, you know, other parts of their lives. When you first, you know, brought Mike Leach in here in 99, just concerned about getting a quarterback, getting some receivers out there. How unique has it been for Riley, for Lincoln to, or challenging has it been to implement the different types of players you guys have now? like. Dimitri and Mark Andrews, along with two receivers, two running backs. Yeah, it's, but it's an unusual situation seems for an air raid guy. Not really, um, and I say that because um, you know how Mummy, who I've got Mike Leach from from Kentucky, they based a lot out of tight end and two backs, and people forget that or miss that. And in this offense, a lot of those principles come from that. So to have two backs, and you see everyone around the country that runs this. There's a lot of two back sets, and either a tight end or he's displaced or on the line. The principles are all the same. Route running and, or the and, the and the route concepts are still the same. So it really doesn't. It's not uh, uh, that difficult to to have them involved in it. Looked like the weather was a serious factor on um, Saturday night. It's raining as a night game. Did you ever consider going away from the visor? <laughs> really? That's what we're. Uh, no, I figured it was already wet. Uh, you know, put the hood up and stay with it. Bobby, if you went out and Notre Dame does, it could very well come down to the two powers there for that final spot. What would your position be? We'll see. You know, um, you know, the obvious part of it for us, all I'm concerned about is we have to play really well this week to, to win, uh, to beat another, you know, they'll, at another – I guess not top 10, they're top 11, uh, top 11 team. And, and then, you know, obviously, you know, after that, yeah, you have Oklahoma State who's in the top four. So we, we have opportunities, but the only way anything happens for us is we continue to play well and, and win this week. And then there'll be more to talk about after that. So that's our focus is on, obviously, you got a, you know, another excellent football team coming in here with only one loss. And, uh, I guess, you know, it's recognized what we did a week ago going on the road and beating a top six team in the country by double digits says something to, to other people. So we'll see if we can do, you know, if we can play well this week and there'll be more to say next week. We talked about, we talked about coaches politicking the need or the not doing it. We talked about that last week. Are you 
Or are you just going to wait till all you've played all your games and then consider whether you do well, that? Well, again, I think we've made a significant, you know, people have recognized to this point what we've done. And, um, you know, when you you go on the road to, to win, you know, in the top six team, you go to on the road to beat Tennessee. And, uh, you know, when that game's scheduled 10 years out, you don't, you don't know what kind of year they're going to have. So we, you know, we've done all we can uh, to, to play well and to be put ourselves in a position to be one of the teams in the top four. But, you know, we've, we've got to win this week. And I think if, you know, if we can continue to play well and if we can win this week, that'll be recognized as well because now the, the quality of opponents and their record and people you've defeated uh, will give you more, you know, more of a boost. At least that's what they say they recognize is the quality of your opponents. So. One thing we talked about, though, is they're not part of the part of the perception coming from the committee is not just who you played and how you did. It's the style of play that teams in the Big 12 are playing. Well, I and, think and, and is that, the style you, of play, if you're talking about defense, obviously we're one of the top scoring, and we're now we're one of the top you know defensive scoring defenses in the country. I, I think we've also. Uh, we held Baylor to 250 yards less than what they're averaging. We think we they're one the top offense in the country, and same with Texas Tech. We held them to 200 yards less than they're averaging, and they're the they're the top one and two offenses in America. So obviously we're playing in all parts of the game and playing well, and statistically it shows that. So I, hopefully, and then you look at our conference. I think the committee and the and all the the, the reporters out there are recognizing that. Four of the top 11 in the country are in the Big 12. So obviously we're one of the better conferences uh, as well. Do you think the people outside realize how good the quarterbacks are in the conference? Uh, what they don't realize is the, uh, the quality of quarterbacks and the innovation on offense and the high tempo. Um, you know, the, we average more snaps, you know, around you know, these offenses because of the tempo. They average quite a few more snaps than all the other offenses out there in the country that are taking time at the line. So, um, but again, I, I, I have great confidence in the defense that we've played and statistically uh, we've, uh, we've played as well defensively as anybody in any other, I mean, I'm not going to say here at any other conference, but we've played really well uh, to go with a high powered offense and tempo. You actually moved up a couple of spots in total defense after you played Baylor. That to, says a lot. To, to 21. Um, did, I'm curious, did you feel like you had this thing figured out how to – I mean, you guys got killed about the way you played defense the last couple of years. Did you feel like you had it figured out, you just weren't able to execute what you needed to do in order to play this way? Uh, yes. Uh, we're Schematically, we're not much different. Uh, but as far as execution on the field with players, it's it's been quite a bit different. And we're, we're, we've just got to continue that. Does that? I was asking Jordan Thomas about this. About how many? You know, you had five three and outs against Baylor. I mean, he said he didn't think that'd be possible unless the offense was playing as well as they have. Well, again, it's um, you know we our execution was there. We were strong up defending the run. That's where I told you. That's where it began begins. Uh, you know, with with them, and and we were able to defend it well and get them in some predictable situations. And, and I also said playing them, um, a big part of it is your offense has to, to hold serve and keep them on the bench and, and score and or move the ball. And even when we didn't score, there was, there was moving the ball. There was, there was a lot of that. There, there was, uh, um, you know, so we, we played together well as a team. It seems like, I mean, one of the big differences this year is your offense screws up, throws a pick, whatever, turnover and the team goes and scores, they immediately kind of come back and they fight back pretty hard to score. Your offense does again. Yeah, they've responded really well that way and have, have been able to do that fairly often, um, for sure. You've been to Tennessee and, and Baylor, um, but how nice is it going to be to have the, the crowd back on your side from, from one of these big primetime games? Yeah, it would be great. Uh, it'll, it'll be great to, to be here at home with, a, with our crowds been, been clamoring for an evening game. A yeah, 7 o'clock game gives them an extra hour to get charged up, if you know what I mean. And hopefully they'll be, <laughs> hopefully they'll be loud and crazy. And uh, hopefully we can, you know, go back and relive the similar situation that we had here in, what was it, 2008 maybe when we had – tech in here or if we could have that kind of crowd it'll sure help get that out would you You're charged up yeah charged up and uh rowdy crowd do you feel like
feel like you're in a, an emotional group because you had an emotional game against Baylor. Um, this will be senior day. And then you got Oklahoma State to follow I me. Mean, are you in an emotional group? You know, we're, we're I, w I don't know about that as much as just in a, in a uh, anxious, want to play mood. And, um, you know, and, and keep, you know, to have, have a hunger to keep improving. And, and our guys have caught on to that. And, you know, it's like you guys all asked and, and should have five weeks ago or so, you, you got this whole stretch, would you like a bye week in there? And my answer today would be absolutely not. Uh, the way we're way we're playing, so you know, hopefully we can again, you know, uh, have a great week and what we do here this week to to give ourselves the best opportunity to beat TCU this weekend. Speaking of chemistry, go ahead, Barry. And speaking of bye weeks, I mean, you've set yourself up to be in the discussion for the playoff, but you're not playing December fifth. Nothing you can do about it. But do you worry that being idle that last Saturday, that last Saturday could have an adverse effect? With other well, again, I, I'll, 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 all that'll depend on how you know how they, the the week before happens for each of us. So that's just the way it's set up this year. Would you like next year to play that first week in December? I said that early in the year that I, you know, I, I felt that would be the best thing is to have a presence then. I think the number one question right now is all fans keep asking is what happened against Texas. When you look back on it now. I got TCU this week. That's all I'm thinking about. Okay, so fans are supposed to do that. I'm not. So I, I can't even. I'm not even going back there. Well, they the can do all they want. The chemistry is a law. Is a is a. Uh, I've got to get this in, guys. <laughs> <laughs> chemistry is kind of boring to a lot of people, but it, it seems like the great teams have really good chemistry. Is this one? Uh, how does it rank with some of your teams with great chemistry? Oh, it's it's right there at the top with any of them. Um, the guys have been just exceptional with each other and pushing each other, uh, what they expect of one another, um, you know, pushing themselves, not just us doing it, you know. So they've been uh, there's been great leadership from our seniors and captains and and, uh, you know, so overall it's been really, you know, it's been great. What about leadership from your walk on quarterback? Uh, my walk on, he's a scholarship guy. Well, before when he got here, he wasn't. He was, yeah, he's not anymore. So, what, what about his he's leadership? been great, you know, of course. I mean, he he's excited every day and he, he spreads that enthusiasm and, and excitement every day to other people. He, uh, you know, he's always, you know, hustling, playing hard, doing everything that he can, and, and you know, the players recognize that. Does having a team like this kind of Revitalize yourself as a coach after the struggles you went through last year. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm pretty much steady the whole time. You know, every year. So, uh, but you know, obviously it it feels good the way they're playing and the way they're working. So it you know it helps to a degree. You've talked up uh, your quarterback's leadership for a long time, and I'm, and I and I take it your word. I, I'm, I believe you. But Baker seems to have a charisma that's unique. And I wonder, is that an extra element? I mean, do you get something more from him that still others didn't bring? Uh, it's fair to say um, some guys can project more, you know, and, and, and only because that's their personality. One thing on a team, in the locker room, on a field, you, can, you cannot be phony. It never works as a player or a coach. When you're together every day, you, you can read each other like a book, you know, so you are what you are, and, and that's him. And, and that's why even – to try and tell them to be reserved, it's not happening, you know, it, it, or it's not going to happen well. So he, he just does what he does, and, and he has a, a way of projecting to others uh, a lot of enthusiasm and excitement. By playing uh, with an edge is one thing, but going over that edge, how do you school the players to play with that edge but don't take it that, that extra? That'll be the first part of our meeting today to show, you know, the – you know, the, the foolish penalties that we got that, that there's no place for. It's bad football when you have them. When a guy does that and, you, and you're talking to him, are they saying they don't hear the whistle? Is it their emotions that are getting the best of them? Because um, I'm sure they look at it and they say, yeah, that wasn't very smart. But in the heat of the moment, they obviously do it. Yeah, I don't need to say what each of them said, but, you know, there's, there's no excuse for it. It's, there's just no place for, for 
you know, foolish penalties. You know, those those penalties, I can't, I mean, truthfully, you know, it's, it's a result of a 10-point swing. I mean, they're going to kick a field goal instead of a touchdown. There's four points. And two of the other penalties were, were approaching, it should have been, were approaching red zone where we got a chance for at least a field goal. And we get the, uh, the uh, unnecessary roughness after the play. So now, you, you know, it's the next down minus 15. So in, in both times, we get nothing out of them. So, you know, to me, that's a 10-point that's a swing in, in, a, you know, in a game where you, you'd, you'd like to have those 10 points. Does this stretch of games kind of remind you of back in 2000 when, when you played Texas, Kansas State, and Nebraska back to back to back? Kind of, just at a different part of the year. Uh, that was sandwiched in the middle of the year, and this is at the end. And but I, I, I like the fact that um, you know, as happened at that time, you, you wanted to keep playing uh, each of them because of the way you were practicing and playing, and feel that way right now. E. Ryan, you talk about how he's not having to carry the whole load. However, when you do load him up, he seems better than ever. I mean, the more carries the more effective he seems to be. That's most carries, I think, since Kansas was the other night. How much? How do you have to weigh resting him, giving mixing the ball, on how much do you also want to, on the other hand, say, feed the big guy? Well, I think right now we're at a point where we don't need, we don't need to hold anything back in the tank. So hopefully we can see him, you know, having, you know, having, you know, similar carries and a similar days. I mean, that's what you want. You have a opportunity for a sort of a unique team when you look at Fournette at LSU and Henry at Alabama those are power big back big big line power football teams you got that with Pirine you also got an air raid the guy running around throwing the ball over the place with with great results is this is this a, a sort of a, a double sorted uh, offense because of what you got with Pirine uh hopefully that's what that's what we always want is to to be very um you know the the ability to be great running it and throwing it. Uh, to me, those are the those are the more difficult offenses to defend, and and it's what we push for. You know, uh, you know to be to be great at both, and to be able to you know the, depending on what people are trying to do to defend you, to be able to hurt them with one or the other.